1999, when most car manufacturers were still arguing over whether airbags should be optional, Mercedes-Benz quietly walked into the Detroit Auto Show and essentially revealed the future. It was called the F100, which doesn't sound all that impressive. But what it represented was nothing short of visionary. Because this wasn't just another German design exercise meant to dazzle journalists before fading into obscurity. This was a full-scale technological prophecy. A car built not for the roads of 1991, but for the world we are driving in right now. Now to the casual onlooker, the F100 looked like something you'd expect to see parked outside a science fiction government building. Long, low and clad in aerodynamic curves. It had the visual charm of a futuristic hearse. A metallic pod with more glass than an aquarium and doors that looked like they were engineered by a spaceship maintenance crew. But underneath that otherworldly exterior was a car decades ahead of its time. You see the F100 was Mercedes-Benz's declaration of intent. The engineers at Stuttgart weren't simply trying to build a prototype, they were trying to predict the very DNA of future motoring, safety systems, driver assistance, communications and ergonomics. They wanted to know what cars would look like once technology stopped being a gimmick and started being the car itself. And remarkably, they were right. And the most radical idea in the F100 wasn't its styling or even its technology, it was where you sat. Mercedes decided that the safest place in a car wasn't on the left or right, but dead center, like in a McLaren F1. But years before anyone knew what that meant. The logic was simple. In most crash scenarios, the center of the cabin is the furthest point from any impact, so the driver sat alone in the middle, commanding the vehicle like an airplane pilot. <laughs> then the roof of the F100 opened in unison with the doors, rotating outward so the driver could step in or out on the side away from traffic. It was an absurdly clever feature. This sort of detail that made you realize how deeply Mercedes thought about safety. Behind the driver sat two passenger seats, offset slightly and tucked behind the wide rear wheel arches. These weren't cramped apologies for seating either. Mercedes engineered the entire cabin to be roomy, ergonomic and futuristic without straying into the absurdity of concept car theater. There were no goldfish tanks or swiveling televisions, just a clean functional design that could actually make sense in a production vehicle. But if you thought that was cool, let's move to the technology in this car. And this is where things get really interesting. You see the F100 was packed with so many innovations that at the time many of them sounded like witchcraft. Take its driver interface, a central screen mounted directly in the driver's field of view, displaying speed, warnings and navigation. In 1991, this was practically magic. Here today, that's your digital instrument cluster, heads up display and driver assist interface all rolled into one. Mercedes also gave the F100 a distant control radar system, what we now call adaptive cruise control. It could automatically adjust speed based on the distance of the car in front. When it finally appeared in production form as Distronic on the Mercedes 1998 S-Class, journalists called it groundbreaking. But in truth, the groundwork had been laid seven years earlier with the F100. There was also a reversing camera integrated neatly into the design. Another first for the brand, one that wouldn't appear in a production Mercedes until 2005. A rain sensing wiper system, present and functional. A xenon headlight setup, already there. Tire pressure monitoring, of course. Even a rudimentary voice recognition system that let you interact with the car using a phone link the ancestor of the modern MBUX. And then, just when you thought they'd run out of ideas, Mercedes decided that traditional keys were boring and outdated, so they replaced them with an electronic card, the precursor to the keyless entry systems we all take for granted today. You see, this wasn't just a car, it was a rolling think tank. Each inch of it seemed to whisper, this is where the industry is heading. Now visually, 
the F-100 was unmistakable, it wasn't pretty in the conventional sense, more spaceship than saloon, but it made a powerful statement about aerodynamic efficiency and modern form. The glass house was enormous, designed for maximum visibility, while the sweeping roofline gave it a sense of motion even when standing still. The headlights were xenon units and the taillights were made from prism rods powered by a single light source that could change both color and intensity. Even the windscreen wipers were innovative. The front unit swept across the entire width of the glass using a single arm that could adjust its arc automatically based on rain intensity. Meanwhile, the rear wiper was cleverly tucked under the roof spoiler. It was a minor detail, but it perfectly illustrated Mercedes's obsessive pursuit of functional excellence. I mean, everything about the F100 felt engineered for purpose, not for show. It was futuristic, yes, but it wasn't fantasy. It was a blueprint. Now beneath that sleek port-like body sat an engineering experiment. Mercedes considered several powertrains during development, including a hydrogen combustion engine. A bold thought at a time when hydrogen was more likely to be found in a balloon than in an engine bay. But ultimately, the F100 used a more conventional petrol engine, but its layout broke all the rules of Stuttgart tradition. You see, for the first time, Mercedes-Benz built a front-wheel drive car. And to appreciate how shocking that was, in 1991, you have to remember that Mercedes-Benz at the time was defined by its rear-wheel drive architecture the backbone of its refinement and handling. The idea of a Mercedes with front-wheel drive was heretical, yet here it was, quietly hinting at the direction that the company would eventually take. Six years later, the first A-Class rolled off the line front-wheel drive and all, and the F100 had predicted it. It was a remarkable example of corporate foresight. What looked like a showpiece was in reality a working prototype for an entirely new chapter in Mercedes's engineering philosophy. When you step back and look at the F100 in context, it's astonishing how much of it became a reality. Adaptive cruise control, tire pressure monitoring, rain sensors, voice commands, electronic keys, reversing cameras, all of these are now standard equipment in most ordinary hatchbacks. So in many ways, the F100 wasn't just ahead of its time, it was ahead of its customers. It was a car designed for a world that didn't yet exist. But to end this video off, in an age where every manufacturer wants to boast about innovation, it's worth remembering that Mercedes-Benz quietly built the future over 30 years ago, and then drove it into the Detroit Motor Show like it was the most normal thing in the world. Because while everyone else was designing for the next model year, Mercedes was designing for the next century. But yeah, at the end of this video, please let me know what you guys thought of the video and what do you guys think of this car. Also, if you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you guys did like it, you'll most probably enjoy most of my other stuff. So just go to my channel, see if there's someone to like, I'll check you guys in the next one. Cheers, eh?